Hello everyone, watch this review here with a look at Bandai's DR it's Mega Man or Rock Man if you prefer, Rock Man being his name in Japan. You can also call him Mega or Rock for short. It does sound a lot more natural with Rock as opposed to Mega though. Yeah. I'll never kind of understand why they sort of changed that for localization. Although now that I've heard Mega Man all these years, obviously that's the version I prefer. At any rate, uh, Mega comes with his robotic dog Rush, as well as a Metal, a recurring, I guess, minion, you know, low-level robot thing from most of the games, or the classic titles at any rate. Although granted, we have some version of him in other titles as well. As well as his little multi-shot pellet. Now if you look there, he doesn't come with a charge shot, and you know, the character is shown sliding, so... Clearly this has to be based on his Mega Man 3 appearance, which coincidentally is also my favorite of the classic, classic Mega Man titles, as opposed to the neo-classic ones, where they sort of had a resurgence for the parts 8 and 9. Or no, it's 9 10. Yeah, I can't remember offhand. But hold on a second until I get him out of pack. By the way, this is what the other side looks like. Now let's uh, quickly start by talking about the accessories I already mentioned, Met or Metal, as well as Rush, so here's a closer look at the pellet, or multi-pellet shot. I'm really not sure why we didn't get a single version as well, but whatever. Plugs into his buster cannon. We have two alternate faces, the first being a struggling face, with the other one being a shouting face, both of which are really nice looking. We have the alternate hand, or alternate buster cannon. By default, huh, I guess it's so you can put down the other hand or both arms simultaneously. It's kind of weird though. Also, I've already put the alternate open hand on one arm, but beyond that, we also get a series of closed fists. This was originally on the other hand, and then we have a sort of slimmer alternate for the buster cannon over there. Now, I should start by saying that Mega Man is short, uh, very, very short. In fact, he's the height of the Marvel Universe figure, if you can believe it. I'm not sure how to feel about that. Um, for one thing, you know, these figures are pretty expensive. But at the same time, you know, the character's actual height does vary considerably, and the fact that he's so short does represent some of the continuities, like the crossover games, for instance, where they it's kind of like half the size of a lot of other characters, and, you know, Captain N, the Game Master, once again, very short, although I try to forget about Captain N. And some of the other continuities, well, I think even the comics now he's kind of short, but in the classic games, and actually a lot of the games, you know, he was about the same height as, like, Dr. Light, Dr. Wily, and so forth, so unless they're also really, really short, I'm not sure how to feel about this. But yeah, he's a good deal shorter than most Figmas, obviously. He's a good deal shorter than D-Arts figures, such as Kazuma here. Although, so I guess he'd work kind of in scale for both if you assume that, you know, Mega Man's short, and in fact he'd work in most lines. Except for the Marvel Universe scale. But if you think that he's actually supposed to be human-sized, then, yeah, I suppose that would work. Um, let's start by having a quick look at the Met, or Metal. And I, the name sort of varies depending on the version. It's just a static piece, no articulation or anything. It's got a glossy paint here on the helmet, as well as the boots, basically all the yellow portions, the eyes sort of cheek or face there, it's just a flat paint. Very nice looking figure. I like the fact that we do get uh, little enemies. It's kind of cool, although, you know, as a pack-in, probably not something super special. All the same, you know, definitely doesn't hurt things. I mean, can't imagine what they might have included otherwise. I mean, maybe another buster shot or a charge buster shot or maybe alternate parts for Rush to get him into some of his um, other modes. But I mean, as is, you know, he's kind of a cool conclusion. Next, to drag things out even further before we talk about Mega Man, let's have a look at his robotic dog, Rush. 
Now this I was kind of really excited for, given that Rush is quite often a neglected character. I mean, yes, you know, he does have his detractors and stuff, because he's kind of a dorky design. At the same time, he's sort of fun. I, I do recall really liking the character as a child. Even the Ruby Spears version from that sort of horrendous cartoon. You know, very nice looking head sculpt here. As you'll notice, both his eyes and um, Mega's there look very similar. I think they probably use just a sticker or something. And then we have a flat paint for the sort of flesh portions with a glossier paint for just some of the more metallic bits with a flat for the white as well. Articulation wise, there's a sort of fair deal here. His head should be on a physical ball, but beyond that, we also have neck articulation. Both slight sides as well as a heavy amount of up and down. Shoulders will only rotate, which is kind of annoying. I like, prefer having just some outward motion, but hey, it's sort of understandable. Also, I would have really loved if we had all internet, um, sorry, interchangeable back legs there with little rockets and stuff for the rush jet mode. Make her stand not including the parts for the Rush Marine, but, I mean, come on. I mean, Rush Coil as well probably would have taken a lot. At any rate, down here at the his knees, elbows, whatever you call those on a dog, he has the same sort of joint that you see. Well, actually, it's more like a joint you'd see in a Figma. Or even, yeah, mostly just a Figma. It's just sort of flat thing, but we have rotation at the top and bottom. And then down at the ankle, or whatever you call it for a dog, you get a little up-down. Feels like you get pivot, but it's hard to tell. Nothing at the waist as far as I'm aware, but he can wag his tail, and you know, that's important. Also, go around. But yeah, Rush, pretty cool. Of course, the main draw is Mega himself. Once again, very short figure, and in some levels I'm a little disappointed here. I mean, when I first saw images and stuff, I was thinking, wow, cool, we're finally going to get a classic Mega Man, and then, you know, once you actually have him in handy, it looks kind of cheap, and still sort of cheap, but, you know, the proportions look about right, which is great. And, you know, the general design is pretty cool, I just wish his hand looked a little different. Now, to change the faces, supposedly the helmet splits in two, but I can't seem to get that. It's probably the most annoying sort of bit I've ever experienced. And that's just too smooth. Usually with hair pieces, there's something you can sort of latch onto. I guess you can probably pull from like one corner of the helmet, but it's something of a hassle. I don't think I'll be able to get the helmet off um, for this review. Yeah, you know, I've been fiddling around with it for a while. Although, as far as helmets go, I should point out that the Methal's helmet does come off. I don't think it'll fit on Mega, though, though it'd be kind of cool if it did. I can't remember which game you could actually knock the helmets off the uh, Mets, but it's not really important anyway. If you see, as you see here, you know, by default there's this sort of red thing here. I'm not sure whether it's supposed to be... Yeah, I think it just plugs in there. I thought there was an extra bit that I would misplaced or something, but that might not be the case. No, here it is. Yes, there is in fact an extra bit which you'd replace this with to... Why doesn't that work? Hold on a second. Alright, apparently there's a small nub on the side here. I'm not sure if you can quite... Oh, there it is. And then you just kind of insert your nail underneath there to pull it out. Otherwise, it's sort of a pain. But the new one plugs in pretty easily. And rather than be painted in, it's got the extra clearance for... You know, I should probably test to see how easily these things plug in before I say they plug in easily. I guess there's an inner peg, which kind of has to fit in. And there. It's firing his buster cannon. You know, I always call those pellets, but I don't think they're actually called pellets. Maybe they are. 
You know what? I have no idea. Something I should probably look up. Something I should have looked up. But I didn't, and here we are. I do feel a little bit bad about not looking at first. Uh, surprisingly, he's not off balance at all by the pelts. I mean, given that, you know, this figure feels so light and everything, I thought this additional weight would sort of tip him over, but I guess he's just got um, a good amount of balance with these boots here. But yeah, it's pretty neat. Now, the whole arm pulls off when you want to interchange for the... I am weak. I am so very weak. I shouldn't have taken nearly as much effort, but it's a little peg. It goes right in there. It's a bit smoother than, you know, it's a physical ball. And voila, we have his normal hands. Now, actually, one thing I would have loved to have seen was a alternate hair piece for the helmet. Uh, if you recall, in at least some of the games, he does have normal hair. He's designed also as, you know, just being a sort of normal boy part of the time. The helmet's more just for battle. So that would have been really nice had Bandai included that. At any rate, like the other figures, he's got his glossier portions, like the dark blues. Then the light blues seem to be, you know, a less reflective paint. Then, of course, the face is also, you know, just a flatter color. He's got a sort of, um, little translucent or transparent uh, piece of plastic for parts um, like here at the ears and again down here at the I guess soles of his feet. Well I think that is it's just a bit of plastic then paint something painted red underneath to sort of give the appearance of a jewel. It's sort of hard to tell though. Otherwise articulation you know we have physical balls here but no real movement because of the sides of the joint. I mean, you can get a little in and out. Not too much here. I imagine it's probably a bit better with the fist. Although, you know, with fists you don't really so much move them around. Nope. You can barely move that at all. Uh, then down here at the elbow maybe sort of ball socket rotation up down. Sort of limited range. Kind of disappointing. Nah. Yeah. I guess you can still get a dynamic pose or something. Maybe a fight for peace or whatever pose. We have a sort of floating shoulder as with many of Bandai's figures. It sort of pops up. Like I was saying, the sort of floating shoulder does allow some additional up down motion as well as in and out besides the usual. You know, ball jointed sort of motion. Oh, by the way, you can get the elbow out a bit further than I thought you could. Just have to work the joint a bit more. I mean, granted, it feels like it could go further or could look a bit further, but I don't want to sort of risk snapping it. It's a bit better than I thought, but it's still kind of lackluster. Uh, the upper torso joint here is mostly just for show. You don't seem to get a ton more motion with it in use. Granted, you can look a little bit further down. It does sort of adjust for if you're posing them sort of sideways. But, I mean, for the most part, I think it's adjust so they can sort of conform to their usual standards. So many of their figures tend to have that extra upper torso joint. And of course, we get the lower torso joint, which is a lot more functional. Almost a full range of rotation as well as a good amount of up-down. I think it's on a physical ball, so it would be that. At the hips, we have a um, sort of bulging socket or whatever. Full range forward back, a little up-down, all that good stuff. Knee. Um, it's just a sort of weird pin like the elbow. Get a sort of good range on it, but Looks like it should rotate, but it doesn't seem to rotate. Weird. Then, of course, the ankle is on a physical ball, it looks like. Spools. I know these joints are kind of hard to describe, but he got the little bit of forward back. Feels like he might get pivot, but it's kind of hard to tell so much as bumping into it. Yeah. 
And of course the head seems to be on a physical ball joint. All in all, not as cool as I thought he'd be, but you know, it's still a really decent figure. I imagine I would prefer him greatly to the Kotobukiya plastic model kit, so I'm happy that I picked this version up rather than, you know, just sort of jumping the gun and buying that older one, especially because I probably would end up buying both anyway. And, you know, there's only so many Mega Man figures you can have. Actually, I guess you can probably have a lot of them, but yeah, I kind of don't want to just sort of inundate and then have to choose which ones I want to keep. Although I guess you can just keep everything and just put some in storage, but I hate putting stuff in storage because that kind of sucks. Uh, in general, you know, decent enough. He will sort of be in scale with, I imagine, a lot of the other characters coming out. Like, if you wanted to sort of do a Super Smash Brothers that will never happen, but we kind of hope it will. I mean, you could put him alongside the Samus, who's already been released. The Link, also just been released, and as well as the Figma Pit, still upcoming. I think he comes out in May. So we get that lineup that, you know, fans have kind of been wanting, but Capcom just hasn't been delivering on. Which is silly, too, because, you know, there are other games on Nintendo consoles where we have Mega Man, and Mega Man appears in so many versus rosters, and yet, you know, Super Smash Brothers. I mean, we get Snake, but we don't get Mega Man. There's something wrong. We get Sonic, no Mega Man. Although, you know, Sonic does kind of fit just as well. But yeah, this has been a look at Bandai's D-Arts Mega Man. A pretty decent figure, not as cool as I thought he'd be at first glance, but I imagine I probably will appreciate this one a lot more in the future, as I get to pose him and stuff, and yeah, you know, just figure out how he looks really, really cool, or ways to make him look even cooler. Of course, you see him sliding a lot when he sort of box poses. So let's just get into one of those. Yeah, I'm not sure how you do that, but as you can see, the hips are on physical balls, and the joint in there allows the additional movement. And I'm generally pretty impressed with uh, Bandai's articulation, although the sort of downside is, you know, when they use physical balls, there is a tendency for things to pop out. Over time, I do kind of worry about wear, although, you know, it's sort of easy to just get things back normal at first. And uh, just to give you a general idea, it feels like he's got a better weight to the sort of legs here, which sort of helps balance him out. Yeah. You know, he almost looks like he's all ready to play some Mega Man Soccer on the Super Nintendo very fun game. Well, kind of fun. I like the abilities in it. But you know what? That's completely off-topic. This has been a look at D-Arts Mega Man. Until next time, folks.